Hey folks, welcome to the next episode of The Main Scoop. I'm Greg Lotko. I'm joined today with my co-host, Daniel Newman. Good to see you. It's good to be back, Greg. Fun conversations. We always have a good time. We kind of go all over the place. Today, we're going to be focusing on hybrid cloud. And, you know, do we still need a focus? You think back, I don't know, a few years ago, hybrid cloud was all about are you going to do it in on prem? Are you going to do it off prem? Is it multi cloud? What does it mean? Are we still talking about it? Do we still need to be talking about it? I think we absolutely need to be talking about it. I mean, first and foremost, you know, we've kind of had these two schools um, that I think have finally met in the middle. And the, there was the one school that was everything's going to the cloud. And I think public. that has public. absolutely yeah. everything's going to the public cloud. Thanks, mm -hmm. Greg because I no one would have known what it meant. Everybody's going to the public cloud, okay? And clearly the world, every hyperscaler and every infrastructure company has pretty much agreed now that's not what's going to happen. And then there was the other side, kind of we call them the cloud deniers. And there was the people that was like, oh, it's never going to work. It's not secure. It's not going to be able to handle our important workloads. We've also seen some, some meaningful uh, sort of pivots away from that philosophy. And remember the cloud's like a teenager now. This thing's like nearing two decades. So this is not a new thing anymore, but hybrid, I think really only in the last two to three years, Greg, has really become understood as the architecture of enterprises and the architecture of business of the future. So I'd, I'd kind of agree with that. Kind so, of. So, well, I mean, people talk about the cloud being the architecture, and I think that's that's loaded. Just like the idea of hybrid cloud used to be loaded by meaning public or private, and then people talk, no, 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 hybrid means whether or not you're going to be multiple service providers or how are you going to do that. Now, when I think about hybrid cloud, it's really more about your overall workload and all of your IT and how that all connects in. So yes, it is about public. Yes, it's about private, but cloud has to include how do you interact with all your on-prem or off-prem apps, whether or not they're using what we might refer to as a specific cloud technology from 10, 15 years ago. Yeah, look, it's, it's, there's a lot of legacy um, there's a lot of technical debt that lives inside of organizations. There's a lot of compelling reasons that some workloads should be in the cloud. There's a lot of reasons, you know, from a privacy, data, trust, that some workloads need to stay on-prem. And I think that's where I was getting at. Those decisions have largely been agreed upon. Now, over time, you'll see some pendulum swinging. I'd use different words, though. So when you started to talk about the other stuff, right, you talked about legacy, you talked about tech debt, and that, that kind of gives it a negative connotation, there's a lot of workloads that are on-prem that are very effective, very useful, high value. They might be legacy, you know, relative to we think about our forebearers or our foundation of where we came from, but there's real value there that needs to be connected in. And speaking of connecting in, why don't we connect in and bring in our, our guest here? Let's ask, let's ask the guest. He All heard right. both of us, you know, um, as hosts, I generally am right more than he is. I think it's really important that we start off there. You've heard his take, you've heard our take. No, but in all seriousness. So you are generally right, but you weren't on that one. Okay. So okay. Right, anyway. are you sure? All right. So joining us today, we have Barry Baker, COO of IBM Infrastructure. Barry, let's pull you into the conversation. When you hear or think about hybrid cloud, what does that mean to you? So I think you're both right on a number of points. Thank you. I, I would say from our perspective, from my perspective, what I've experienced at IBM is hybrid cloud is, is now becoming and almost kind of maturing. I would say we've been talking about hybrid from an IBM perspective for five, six years. But I would say if we, when I talk to clients now, what I see that they've done is we would start to call it hybrid by default. Like they almost ended up in this state through entropy or opportunistic things where they have sprawl and they call it hybrid. What we're pushing towards and what we're starting to see kind of more clients on the leading edge is to be a lot more intentional. We're calling it, you know, hybrid by design. Like right. there and and the key to hybrid by design is actually staring at and starting at the workload. So you guys touched on where are the right workloads? Where should they live? Um, legacy, I think, is 
another word for yeah. workload that works and is, is providing oh, like value. That. Wait, wait, legacy is a, another term for workload that works. That's I what like I meant. That. I like that. That's what I meant. Then you meant so well. I think you both are right. I think, but I do think hybrid is here to stay. I think even when we see, even Microsoft just announced their own silicon, right? Mm -hmm. We're seeing heterogeneous technologies being used. It's more about how do you orchestrate? How do you balance it? How do you, how do you, how do you marshal all of that to solving your business challenge in an optimal way that leaves you with optionality and flexibility. So let me let me test and make sure I I, I got what you said Be, because if I do, I think I'm in final agreement. So I, I I think you talked about kind of the evolution we've gone through where everybody thought cloud meant one thing and they started marching to that direction. And when they went in that direction, they realized, ah, yeah, it does this well, but it doesn't do this, that, or the other. So they ended up fragmented or hybrid as a result of not really starting with the workload. So as they've gotten to this learnings, they've started to think, ooh, the way isn't to just force one direction or another, it's to start with technologically, business-wise, what am I trying to do? Where is this optimal to run? And what else do I have to have it interact with? So it's rather than hybrid by happenstance, Correct. it's hybrid by design and a recognition of the value of all these technologies. And then just tying it in a little bit more specifically from a mainframe perspective and mm -hmm. from a legacy perspective, our point of view around that is that's investment protection. You, you've invested so much in that platform and the right workload on that platform will outperform that workload running on any other platform, but it's gotta be that right workload. So how do we help our clients move that workload, pieces of the workload can move and live in a public cloud, but that's not the answer for everything. I think it's more than investment protection. I mean, when you, when you well, I, I think when people say investment protection, it, it's more about the protect becomes don't lose. Whereas I think about it as, as a continue to harvest and sow and reap the rewards because of the investment you've done. It's more than, it's more than, investment protection, it's continuing to harvest that value. Can it you know, be a really great dividend or a high yield bond, yeah, absolutely. you know, kind yep. of thing. But I actually think it's important when you talk about investment too, that you talk about the FinOps aspect. I know uh, yeah, IBM's made some pretty big investments with Aptio recently, yeah. but look, there's, there's a very big story when it comes to hybrid cloud about economics. So, yeah. you know, I use the word legacy more in the way he described it than I think you ascribed what I was saying. But the point of it is, is that there are workloads that are very intensive. They use a lot of compute. Uh, they have a lot of data. You know, we know egress, we know costs to run mm -hmm. workload. Companies are finding out now that we're nearly two decades into the cloud that some workloads are really expensive to run in the cloud and that mm -hmm. the, the financial, uh, the calculus as we like to call it, is that it, it, it doesn't actually give you the benefit. So even if there are some other benefits, the mathematics, companies are, and this is something I spend a lot of time talking to CEOs, and the CEOs I talk to are weighing the, the math more than ever before, and they're finding that Prem makes sense in a lot of cases, and that's leading to the more and more hybrid adoption. Well, as investors or even customers of these companies, we want them to have good, sound fiduciary responsibility. We don't want them chasing technology because it's a buzzword. We want them doing things that are going to return value to but the just company on, and shareholders. And just on the Aptio acquisition, I mean, we get to see an over half a trillion dollars of IT spend flowing through that. And we get to see how that is being spent. And it actually starts to, you pull that back and say, well, what do you then do with that? Well, well then what you do with that is you actually start to look at particular workloads and help clients say, this isn't the optimal place. Here's the patterns here's, we see. Here's where you yeah. could be going and you know get a return. Speaking of kind of technical wonderment though, I do want to, to jettison into the future because one of the interesting inflections around uh, hybrid and hybrid cloud is generative AI. So we're seeing companies talking about private AI and gener generative, you're seeing kind of hybrid AI talk. And you're also seeing some companies, you know, just on the other side of the equation, going as far as saying, we're only going to put our most capable features for generative AI in the public cloud. You know, Barry, I'd love to get your take on kind of like, is, do you see generative AI as a forcing function? Do you think the way well-designed data fabrics and architectures can work, that hybrid IT and hybrid cloud can work really well? 
but generative even if generative ai ends up being more centralized to public cloud because of how it's being developed i mean what are your thoughts on on how that's shaping what, up? what we see is the use of and trying to adopt generative ai is actually going to drive a drive your hybrid strategy even harder meaning you're not like a lot of our clients for various reasons whether it's security whether where is the data that that hybrid architecture actually is going to if you kind of embrace it and say okay instead of telling me i'm going to put generative generative ai all here in this one place no we're going to actually be able to enable you to put it where it is most valuable whether that where the data is or where where the transaction is right so there is a hybrid is going to be an accelerator from our perspective well I and I, and I like the idea of the data versus the transaction. It, I mean, at least the, the customers, the clients out there that I'm talking to, yeah, they may want the results or the manifestation to happen in the cloud where the transaction is, but a lot of them are saying, hey, I want the keys to the kingdom. I want my core data mo model, my jewels and my data yeah. to stay on-prem. And yeah, I may interact or combine it with data that's out there and render yeah. advice, but and I'm they talking, want to be protective. yeah, and I'm talking about a lot of the app companies. So what I'm what I'm talking about is companies like Microsoft and Salesforce that are that are genuinely making certain features more available and accessible immediately in the public cloud domain. Having said that, you know what IBM's doing with Watson X is a good example. Yeah. You know, I've spent a lot of time with with the team looking at that and, and its integrations with Red Hat yeah. and how that's really enabling that multi cloud uh, data environment yeah. for models to be built using edge, prime, public cloud, and obviously private cloud data to deliver generative. So I think it's very achievable. I actually think it's more of the gamification. And I think people out there need to pay attention to the fact that some companies are trying to push it because it's to their benefit sure. yeah. to make the workload available in the public cloud. But if, if you understand well, the economics- Well, they want access to that data. Correct. They want to control the right. ingress and the egress. And it really, you know, it shouldn't be designed by. But we're your... not using your data, Greg. No, no, no. I'm, <laughs> I, the, the point, the proof is, it shouldn't be designed by your app provider. It should be designed by what it is you're trying to get out of it and how you want to protect it. It's like the social companies aren't listening. So it needs the capability. Well, social, no, the social companies are listening. That's no, they the said they're not. To everything, them. to everything. I believe them. That's re it's really interesting. You know, another thing I think that hybrid is really driving is, um, is the sustainability agendas. You know, in January, I'm actually going to be heading to Davos for the first time. And I think one of the biggest conversations that goes on there every year is around climate around sustainability. And let's face it, I don't know if you all heard, but data centers, because of the uh, growth of generative AI, are going to go from, I think, one to now 2% of all the world's power is going to be consumed in the data centers. And I mean, that might not sound like a lot, but that's growing, that's an exponential growth on a one year to one year basis. Um, and with, you know, everything from cars to, you know, edge clouds to, you know, more powerful PCs, more compute, more compute, more compute, that's more electricity, more power. Hybrid cloud has some good economics, which we spent some time on, but it also has some value from a sustainability standpoint as well, right, Barry? Yeah, but to me, it actually all ends up going back to that workload discussion. Mm -hmm. From our perspective and what we do with the mainframe and IBM Z is every generation, generation after generation, we continue to push the limits on how dense you can, you can run that system, how much workload per kilowatt you can get out of the system. So for certain workloads, we see a tremendous demand for, okay, today I'm running something over here in a distributed environment, scaled out, inefficiency from a network perspective. How can we leverage the strengths of the platform from a sustainability perspective to consolidate more and more workloads? We see a lot of that with Linux One, a lot of that with modern databases landing on the technology and driving that agenda from a sustainability I perspective. I mean, seriously, from a, from a hardware and a software perspective yeah. and from a software perspective, we focus a lot of our time on the most sustainable, efficient platform on the planet. And you know that, that's a really big thing relative to the tie-in to hybrid cloud, where your data is, having a high-speed connection to it, and interacting and architecting the workload appropriately, you can get that effectiveness and efficiency. You can tie in some of these other models and capabilities, put the right workload where it needs to be, connected in effectively through APIs, high-speed connects and all that. 
you manifest yourself then out to your customer base effectively, efficiently, and I mean efficiently, meaning very green, that that larger machine comparatively that is way more dense on processing and way more effective and efficient software takes up a small corner of that data center and consumes so much less power and you get the best of all worlds. Yeah, from a silicon standpoint too, I mean, you mentioned uh, you mentioned what they're doing with Maya and I think Cobalt this week and AWS has a decade now into its own silicon design. And of course, every company, you know, Arm has, has had a, a massive uh, rise in visibility. It's kind of opened up the floodgates to companies building their own ASICs, their own, you know, their own SOCs and designs and, and, and compute platforms. And, and if you listen to what it is, a lot of it is the three things we've been talking about with hybrid cloud. There's a very close alignment. It's performance, which is a big reason you think about hybrid cloud. Yep. It's efficiency and lower power consumption. Yeah. And it's economics. And the reason you're seeing it, and what I'm saying is as it drives sustainability is in the end, companies are like, hey, I need to run this Oracle workload or I need to run, you know, this, this, this SAP workload, or whichever right. database, whichever ERP. Um, if we can run it on two or three different, you know, uh, different versions of silicon instances, and one is much lower cost, it's lower power and it's per more performant, that's the way things are going to move. And I think that's really when in the end, I know I'm trying to maybe oversimplify, but that's the story of hybrid cloud. Absolutely. Well, it, it, you, want, you want the freedom and flexibility to put the workload wherever you want, just so that you leave open the opportunities and the choice, but then you do want to comparatively see how they perform, how much energy right. they consume and all that. And then you make your decisions about the economics versus the performance, something that doesn't have to perform fast. You might say, oh, I'm going to go to a lower cost server or this provider or that. Something that you need top performance, maybe you're going to pay a little bit more for that, but it's really about the whole we're using a database, I think you're mentioning every one of these things is a different vector. Is that mm -hmm. a good database joke? Uh, it's one yeah. vector or another, but in the end, I think it is and. I mean, we are trying Agreed. as IT leaders yeah. to replace the word or with and. I don't have to choose performance or yeah. low power, right? So I was just meeting with one of the mainframes, CIO is one of our largest clients, and, and I've worked on the platform for two decades, and I've had conversations over those two decades with clients, and by and large, it's always been a, how do I move off? How do I do this? How do I move to that? That, But the and question is now what the, what the conversation is all about. They see Microsoft coming out with Silicon. They see, and they, they recognize that, okay, there are workloads that I need to a full stack approach to, and they are coming at us now saying, tell me what is the, re the best workload yeah. for this platform? And that's the conversation at this point. It's not a... Well, and part of this is we've watched in our careers yeah. this pattern play out time after time with each new technology was going to be the panacea and the be all end all. And none of them ever was. They all had a core strength or something they were strong at. I mean, that's, that's why they were invented. Yep. But they didn't do everything. So, I mean, you don't grab a screwdriver to bang in a nail, you, you use the right tool for the right job. So, so, so if they don't do everything, then you want an option that is hybrid? We're right back at the beginning. How about them apples? It is all yeah. about hybrid. I, and that's exactly what I was going to say. I, you can bring us home, but I, 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 what you see here is we're all in violent agreement how about them apples? Yeah, that was that was a good one. Well, Barry, before right. we run off, because I, I do want to, yeah. we do have to wrap up here, but just love to get your quick take on kind of what are the big trends that you uh, you and the team at IBM are paying attention to moving forward when it comes to hybrid cloud? So I would actually say, it, let's talk about generative AI for a second, because it, it's hybrid, but it's about generative AI in the context of the platform. So what we're working on with Watson Code Assistant for IBM Z is, an essential for where our clients are trying to modernize their applications on the platform. That is that is capability that can consume and understand hundreds of millions of lines of your COBOL code and then help you under, help an application developer figure out how to use it, how to modernize it, potentially even translating it into another language that's optimized for the platform. So from an investment perspective and where our focus is right now, it's how do we leverage generative, generative AI in the context of hybrid to help our clients modernize on the platform. Huge focus. Well, Barry, I appreciate you taking some time, spending it here with Greg and I. Thanks Great for having me. Great yeah. conversation, even a little debate. Uh, you know, a debate that ended up in violent agreement. Yeah. Let's do it debate. again soon, Barry. Thank you. Thanks. Pleasure having you.
All right, everybody, you had it here. We talked a little bit about hybrid cloud, and once we got over the definition of legacy, we realized that Greg and I did agree on more things than we disagreed on. Now, when the cameras come do. off, I can't tell you what's about to happen, but we do appreciate you tuning in because these trends are really important. We are gonna see generative AI, sustainability, both be things that are gonna drive the future here, but what we do know for sure is this hybrid cloud, multi-cloud era is in full effect. But for this show, for the main scoop, for Greg Lockco and myself, We'd love you to hit that subscribe button and join us for all the future shows, but we're going to say goodbye for now. We'll see you all later. See you next time on The Main Scoop.